Well, today what we're gonna do is take a look at the Raspberry Pi 400, not the four, but the 400. Ever since these came out, I had one project in mind. I learned about this device and this form factor, and I thought this has the perfect makings of a Combian 64 vice emulating machine. That's what this thing is. And uh, today what I'm going to do is show you how you can turn your Raspberry Pi 400 into the ultimate vice emulator for Commodore computers using the wonderful distribution Combian 64. Before we get started though, I do wanna say that everything that you need, because there's a lot of steps in this process, all the steps will be on the companion blog post. You'll see a link down at the bottom here. And I'll also refer to that again at the end of the video. So make sure you check out the companion blog post to get all the links you need, all the instructions, everything you need to recreate your own Raspberry Pi Combian 64 mashup or what I'm going to be calling the Combian Pi 400. So let's get started building the Combian Pi 400. Okay, the first thing we need to do is download and install Combian 64 on an SD card. So let's start that process now. The first thing we'll want to do is visit the Combian 64 website. The link will be in the companion blog post. But as you scroll down, you'll notice there's been many projects that use Combian 64. Hopefully this project will end up on this page. We will see. Time will tell. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you support this distribution by sending Carmelo a bit of change. Some of the change that's in your pocket or maybe some uh, greenbacks that are in your pocket. It is worth the cost of admission. Once you support the project, you'll be given a link in Google Drive to version 3.0 of Combian 64. That will come to you as a 7-zip file or a .7z. You will need to download and install the appropriate software for, which, for whichever computer you're using. After unzipping the file, you'll find that you have a .img file. This is the file that we're going to burn to an SD card. Let's start that process now by inserting a micro SD card into our USB port on a computer. Balana Etcher is the software we want to use to burn that image to the micro SD card. Let's go ahead and get that started. We'll move that image file into the Etcher software. We'll tell it to burn to a micro SD card. Then we'll hit flash and we'll watch it do its magic. So now that we have Combian on a SD card, one of the things we need to understand is that Combian 64, the initial download will not work on the Pi 400. It is designed to work on the Raspberry Pi 4. So what we need to do is install it on a Raspberry Pi 4, do some upgrades, and then take that SD card and transfer it over to the Raspberry Pi 400. Let's check out how to do that now. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the micro SD card from the micro SD reader. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to set up our Raspberry Pi 4. Now, before we get started, I'm gonna turn on the Raspberry Pi 4 with its default distribution, which is Raspbian OS. I wanna show you what you would have to go through in order to set up a Raspbian OS distribution on a Raspberry Pi 4 and then install the Vice emulator software on a Pi 4. I do not want to go through this process on a Combian 64 version that I'm creating because it's quite lengthy. You can see I've got to install some updates. I've got to configure the monitor. I've got to ensure that I have the Vice software installed. And actually when I install Vice, I like to use something known as Flatpaks. And Flatpak is one of the best ways to install Linux software, at least in my opinion. There'll be others who will disagree. But with Flatpak, at least I know I'm getting the most up-to-date version of Vice and I get updates regularly. Now, again, this is quite the process though, if you're using the Raspbian OS. What if we had a distribution that just did all of this for us so that immediately when we burn that micro SD card, we had Vice ready to go. And on top of that, Vice runs and loads quickly, doesn't have this weird user interface that we have to deal with in a window. It also removes all of the other pieces of the Linux distribution that is not needed. So what Combian does is it removes all those services that aren't needed to run the Vice software. So again, as you can see here, we've loaded up Vice 
in the Raspbian OS. While we do get some flexibility using Raspbian OS, it doesn't really give us that true performance that we want when we're looking at a Vice emulator. Now, the other thing we need to know, though, is that Combian is not bare metal software. You have to remember it is still running on top of a Linux system. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can get our version of Combian 64 updated on a Raspberry Pi 4 so that we can go ahead and get that installed on our Raspberry Pi 400. Along the way, you'll get your first taste of Combian 64. Okay, the first thing we want to do with our Raspberry Pi 4 is replace the Raspbian OS with the Combian 64 image that we burned or flashed earlier. Once we do that, we'll turn the Raspberry Pi 4 back on, wait for it to boot up, and you'll see it boots right into a C64 mode, which is awesome. Now we're gonna hit F8 here, and that's gonna take us to the menu. That's a little tip for you who are using Combian 64 for the very first time. And we can navigate using our cursor keys up and down through the menu when we hit the F8 key. We'll be referring to F8 quite a bit, so get used to the F8 key. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go into the Combian menu, bounce out, go to the Raspberry Pi configuration utility and, and get connected via Wi-Fi. We're gonna to need to do that in order to update our version of the Combian 64 distribution on the Pi 4, so it will run on the Pi 400. More information on that process will be in the companion blog post. But once that's done, you have an SD card from the Raspberry Pi 4 that you can now insert into the Raspberry Pi 400. Speaking of the Raspberry Pi 400, how about we do a little open the box time? On the back of the box, we will find that we have a Broadcom BCM 2711 quad core 64 bit system on a chip. We have four gigabytes of RAM. We have dual band, Bluetooth 5.1. We have gigabit ethernet. We have two USB 3.0 and one USB 2.0 ports. We also have our familiar GPIO port or input output ports. We also have our video and sound through via two micro HDMI ports. We'll be using one of those in our project today. And of course we have SD card support. The one thing about the Raspberry Pi 400 though is the keyboard. It includes a keyboard on top of your Raspberry Pi. On the back of the Raspberry Pi 400, you'll know we have noticed that we have a good selection of ports that we mentioned earlier. We also have that GPIO header port, which really looks like an old cartridge slot from a Commodore computer, I think. I may have to do something with that. Keyboard is reminiscent of a uh, modern device, maybe more like a Mac keyboard, uh, very low profile. Let's go ahead and unplug our Raspberry Pi 4, use those same cables and connect our Raspberry Pi 400. And then we'll also plug in our micro SD card that is ready to go with Combian 64. Oh, and by the way, let's go ahead and plug in a USB joystick from our DC64, which uh, should come in handy and hopefully that'll work on first boot. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and insert our micro SD card. And that is inside. Now, let's go ahead and click the little switch and see what happens. Now it obviously does not boot that quickly. We are in C64 mode, and one of the first things we wanna do is go ahead one more time and check for updates. Once those terminal commands are complete, I'm going to bounce back into the Combian menu. And I just want to show you what the Commodore Plus 4 looks like on Vice. And it is glorious. It works just like a real Commodore Plus 4. Next thing I want to do is make some changes. And I want to be able to connect to this via SSH. I'm changing that here and using Commodore.local as the address. You'll see that pop up later. We're going to go back in and set our disk activity on our power. You definitely want to do that to give it a little extra interactivity. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our vice menu here and we're going to change some settings for our display. Don't worry, I'm going through this really quickly, but all of these settings will be in the companion blog post so that you can configure your Combian 64 to work with a standard HDMI monitor and doing things like turning off the blur, turning off the scan lines, and just giving it a render file that makes it a little cleaner and using the vice palette to make the color stand out and look a little more modern, but also retro at the same time. Can that possibly be?
So here's what it looks like when we get done making our video setting settings. Here's the before, here's the after. I think I really like the after better. So make sure you spend time doing that. Now I mentioned we went through to set up SSH. That'll let us log in to our Raspberry Pi from another computer. It'll let us do updates, but it will also let us upload files directly to the Raspberry Pi 4, such as The Night Witch. This is a Valkyrie 3 game uh, that I am going to upload, and we're going to give this a shot on our new Raspbian 400. So I have SSH'd in, or SFTP'd in in this case, and I'm going to upload that ROM file. This is a free software that you can download. It is a homebrew so that you can have some fun with it. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to attach that disk image. We're going to load it up and we're going to see if we can play this homebrew game on our new Raspbian 400. Notice the disk sounds. Those are emulated through the Vice emulation software. That's pretty cool. Let's give this a shot and see what it sounds like and plays like. Oh, this is good. Got good sound, got good video, good quality, everything. It's running just like a champ. I feel like I'm actually playing on a Commodore C64 at this point. So I'm very pleased. Let's go ahead and just play a little bit more. If you're a true Commodore aficionado, you'll notice immediately that the keyboards aren't positioned correctly. We can go in and change a quick setting and change that to positional setting to enforce mapping like a traditional Commodore keyboard. Once that's set up, all the keys will be where you expect them on a traditional Commodore computer. However, the keycaps are not right. So now that we've got the keyboard working in a fashion that mirrors an original Commodore computer, one of the things the Raspberry Pi 400 has is a standard PC keyboard. Let's modify that so it looks a little more Commodore-y. Is that a word? Commodore-y? Hmm. Making the Raspbian 400 seem more like a Commodore keyboard begins with these non-transparent vinyl stickers I found from an Amazon dealer known as Royal Galaxy. Links in the companion blog post and below. I purchased four sheets, two black, two white. They're about $4 a sheet and about $4 shipping. So may as well purchase more for the shipping. And you'll see they fit about perfectly on the Raspberry Pi 400. Well, some of them do, as you'll find later. So it all begins with a, an X-Acto knife, and I'd like to peel those off and then stick it to the X-Acto knife and then place it carefully because I am very compulsive about these things. I like it to be just perfect. And I chose to stick them in the upper left-hand corner. They did not fit well in the center because part of the label, the original labels would still be showing if I put them perfectly in the center. So I am not going to do every one on screen, but suffice it to say this took a while and you'll see that it looks pretty good. There's a few little hiccups here uh, where the home keys are, but by and large, I'm pretty pleased with what I have so far. Time will tell how they last, but the original keycaps on the Raspberry Pi 4 are also embossed stickers. So hopefully they'll last as long as I need them to for this project. I have all the alphanumeric characters in place. Now I want to hit the special character keycaps. And to do that, I want to make sure I get them properly placed. So what I do is I go ahead and fire up my Combian Pi 400. I'm going to officially call it that, that now and start hitting keys to make sure that I map those keys correctly with the proper vinyl sticker. And here's a situation where the keys did not fit properly. So I just needed to cut it in half. Once it's cut, it's ready to be placed on the keyboard very carefully. And I think that up arrow and Pi key just looks perfect on our Combian Pi 400. There was no way to trim this run stop so it would fit perfectly, so I decided not to include the run stop key and just use the escape key. And here's a comparison of an original VIC-20 keyboard with our new Combian Pi 400 keycaps. And finally, all the keycaps are in place, and I think we have a pretty good looking Commodore keyboard here. Okay, everything's working well. Let's add some branding and let's add a serial tag to the bottom side of that Raspberry Pi 400 to make it even look more like a Commodore computer. 
Okay, we're gonna put a logo right in this area here between F1 and F5, and I want it to look similar to the Commodore Plus 4 logo. I really like that logo, and it works well with my Combian Pi 400 name. We're also going to create a serial number placard for the back, and again, we're gonna use the Commodore Plus 4 as a guide and include our own serial number. So I know many people find this odd, but I like to do a lot of my design in Google Slides, believe it or not. And what I've done is I've taken some rough ideas I had and I'm now fleshing out the design, the final design for my Combian Pi 400 logo. I've imported an image of the serial number placard from the Commodore Plus 4 and I'm simply going to trace or recreate that within Google Slides using the built-in tools. Once I have it completed to my satisfaction, now what I'm gonna do is just uh, do a quick print in color. Looks okay, sizes aren't right. So now what we need to do is determine how big this logo should be. Now that we have the logo, how big does it need to be to fit on here? We'll take some notes in our handy dandy grid paper journal. Then we'll go back and see about how long are we going to want it and take a few additional notes here to myself. Now, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and redesign a sheet that will have multiple copies of not only the logo, but also of the serial number ID. So if I mess it up, I've got several copies on a single sheet. Okay, and once I have the sizes about where I need them, I do a test print. I go ahead and cut out those kind of prototypes. These are just on regular paper. I test it out, looks pretty good, size is okay. Probably could be a little bit smaller. I check out my serial number plate on the back, that looks pretty good. And then I go ahead and print out a test with some color on regular paper. I'm gonna go ahead and try and cut these, trying to use some guides to cut around the uh, the, the little fillets there so that they're nice and round. Had some issues there, but I get those worked out in the end. And the prototypes look pretty good. I think it's now time to get ready and print these on vinyl. I found these vinyl stickers by Ava, I believe, Paper Group, and they are for a laser printer and they are matte, which seems to be perfect for what I need. So we'll go in and load a single sheet of the vinyl paper into my color laser printer. That page is feeding through to print in color on our vinyl sticker sheets. And one of the things I noticed immediately was that the dark, the colors were darker on the vinyl sticker sheet and were actually much better than on paper, which is perfect. Now it's time to go through the laborious process of actually cutting these and trying to get around those corners. I decided I wasn't gonna leave any white, but I was gonna try and trim completely around, including the rounded corners. So I've got an X-Acto knife, I've got a paper cutter. Let's see how it turns out. I have to say, I am pretty pleased with these vinyl stickers. I think the logo has a great retro look. Again, kind of stealing a little bit the design from the Plus 4. And I really like the extra detail that the Combian serial ID plate on the back adds to the Combian Pi 400. And I hope you like it as well. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode where I turn a Raspberry Pi 400 plus Combian 64 into the Combian Pi 400. I think it's a great project. It's a fun project. It's one that's easy for you to do. Again, everything you need will be on the companion blog post that's down here below, including the uh, links to the labels I've created, the, the links to purchase your own stickers for the keyboard. Everything you need is going to be in that companion blog post for you. Hey, if you like the video, be sure you hit that like button down below. Also, would love to hear your comments. What would you have done differently if you had created this project? What should I change? What did you like? What didn't you like? Because that will add to the value of this video. So for now, hope you enjoyed my build of the Combian Pi 400 Retrocombs out.